Hey, this is Mad Matt from Budget Boosting. Today I'm going to show you some interesting stuff. A lot of you, I'm sure, have older trucks, and especially Fords from around 85 to around 96. Okay? These Fords have fuel injection. And what I'm going to show you is going to cover all the Broncos from around 86 to 96, all the F-Series Ford trucks from 86 to 96, with the V8 fuel-injected engines, whether they're 302s or 351 Windsors. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to get trouble codes off these engines. Now, they sell these books, but, you know, these little Haynes books at AutoZone and Craigins and all those other auto parts stores and everything. But, as you can see, you got to really dig deep to uh, figure out how to do things. And the way they write these books sometimes is a little bit overcomplicated when you just want to simply get this done. You don't want to have to jump on a multimeter and do this and that and the other, which takes about, you know, a bunch of time. You just want to get to the check engine light, start counting the, the number of times it shows and illuminates, and that's how you figure out the codes. So, without any further ado, you look on the driver's side of the uh, truck. And you look over here, and they say something about testing. And you look for a little thing that says, electronic test. And I've already done it. You unplug the pin, and you have to make a jumper. Because when you pull this little top off, you're going to see this. And you get yourself a jumper wire. I'll show it to you. Basically take a wire and crimp two male ends on it. And that's going to be your jumper wire. And you look at this, this plug here. And when you pull this little cover off, both these things are going to be plugged into the, uh, both these things are going to be plugged into there. The big side is going to be in here, and the individual thing is going to be on the side. See? And you take this off, set to the side, and you see your diagnostic test ports. Now the book will tell you one thing or the other and have you looking at a bunch of stuff, but pretty much I'm going to save you a lot of time. You look at here and you look at this bottom, first bottom one, and you plug one of the male ends into it. Then you got the separate thing that's on the side, the separate wire, and you plug that in. And now you've done the jumper to where we can go in the console now and count the number of times the uh, check engine light flashes and like for example say the light flashes one two and there's a pause and it flashes again once every time there's a pause it's going for a different number every time it flashes quickly it's reading a number so say the check engine light goes flash 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 and pauses that's a three and when it pauses then you're ready to write the next number one two three that would be a three so you count the number of times the check engine light flashes and when it pauses, that's a new number. So we're going to go in the console and do that. Okay, we're going to now start counting the flashes of the check engine light. And every time it pauses, that's a new number. So we're going to look for the flashes, count the flashes, write them down on paper. When it pauses, that's a new number. Count the flashes, write down that number of flashes as a number. We'll do that, so on and so forth, until the check engine light stops flashing. So we're going to start again. Turn the ignition on and wait for the check engine light. Could take a while sometimes for the light to start flashing. Two. Three. Two. Okay, we just got done counting the flashes inside the cockpit of the Ford F-250. We counted the flashes, wrote the numbers down. It's kind of hard because the flashes pause, and sometimes they pause for a good time, and you look away for a second, and it's in the middle of flashing. So the easiest way to do this, have one guy writing down the codes, another person just eyes fixated on the check engine light. So the second it flashes, he's counting. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. So you have to have one guy watching that code. 
the check engine light blinks and telling the other guy right, okay, six, three, two, because the second you turn away, that thing's gonna start flashing and you'll miss a number. So anyway, long story short, that's what we did. And we came up with code 23. You don't want to read my writing because it's not the prettiest in the world. Doctors and mechanics, they have the worst handwriting on the planet. I'm a mechanic, so yeah, I'm right next to the doctor. You can't read their writing. Anyway, 23, code 23 is one of the codes we came up with. Throttle position sensor out of range. Code 13, RPM unable to reach test limit. Well, if you can't rev your throttle, if the sensor is telling you you're not revving, you're not going to reach any RPMs, and your engine's going to stumble, which is what this did. As soon as you start, it goes Bleh! and cuts right off. Or when you go up with the throttle, it starts choking and backfiring and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So, yeah, I suspected the throttle position sensor even before I started writing codes. But I wanted to show you guys how to check the codes on OBD1 Fords because they're different than OBD Chevys and everything else. Everybody on OBD1 is entirely different. OBD2 from 96 to now, they're all the same. They all have the same plug. You can hook up any OBD2 reader on any car, 96 and newer, and come up with readings. Where OBD1, Nissan, Ford, everybody did their own connector, their own jumper series, their own everything. So you have to look it up on each individual car from 1980 to 1995. That's the OBD1 year range. OBD2, 96 to now. So there you have it. Two different kinds of code readers, different kinds of equipment, different kinds of plugs, with the exception of OBD2, which is exactly the same from 96 to now. Okay, that being said, the codes I got from this Ford OBD1, 23, we covered that. 13, we covered that. 33, this is kind of a funny code to me because I know about it. 33 says EGR not detecting an opening. Well, I bypass the EGR because I don't like exhaust going into my intake. So I pretty much canceled my EGR, so I expected that code. That code is no big deal. Good to go. Okay, well, I already went and bought a throttle position sensor. You can buy these at AutoZone all day long. And Craig and O'Reilly, they got their own brand. But the Duralast brand is covered by AutoZone. They're great. Here's what the throttle position sensor looks like. And we're going to show you on our next video how to change this throttle position sensor because it's unique on the Ford. I'll get back to that. So we'll be making a special video on how to change the throttle position sensor on these specific kinds of Fords because they are different than any other vehicle I've seen. Most vehicles, you can look right under the hood and go, oh, there's the throttle position sensor. The Ford, good luck. I'll be making a special video on that, so stay tuned for that video too. And thanks again for watching Budget Boosting. If you like us, like us on Facebook, like us on our YouTube page, look at our website, explore it, check it all out, look at our window stickers, and Budget Boost your car today with a Budget Booster window sticker. And remember, as always, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't need, like I didn't need air conditioning. I didn't need power steering for this car. So my engine is just running the water pump and the alternator, and I got the crank pulley. That's it. Um, the air conditioning, air pump, and power steering pump, and they had a bunch of other clutter taking this whole area. It was all removed in this car, which makes a lot more room for an intercooler. 